Hey, it's David. Let's do a brake upgrade on the KTM Duke. Whilst I've still got this cast on and the bones in my arm are healing, I can't do some of the major work I need to do on the bikes. So instead, I'm going to do a bit of catching up with some routine maintenance and upgrades that I've had stacking up for a long time. And today it's the turn of the 390 Duke. With the generation two small Dukes, the 390, and I believe also the 250, 200, 125, one of the changes that was made was to upgrade the front brake disc. So it gained a much bigger disc. So this stopping power on the front was improved. But I'm going to upgrade it a little bit more. Now, I'm not going for the ultimate upgrades or anything. All I'm simply going to do is I'm going to swap that out for this, which is a Galfa Wave Disc. Now, this is a better disc. It's got more cooling, so it'll break better for longer than the standard one. As I say, it's not the ultimate disc, but it's a very good disc. Now, this, as it happens, isn't actually a new disc. I've bought a used, a used disc, and it has been used quite hard, but there is plenty of wear left in it, so it's still a great disc and a great upgrade. Quickly run through the basics that I've already done and to get the bike in the condition it is, as you see. First of all, I've cleaned it, because there's nothing worse than working on a dirty bike. You get dirt on your hands, you get dirt in your tools, you get dirt in the mechanics of what you're trying to do. So stage one, clean it. Stage two is get it up in the air so the front wheel is able to turn. And actually, because we need to get it off and we can't get it off if the weight of the bike is sitting on it. Now to do that, you've got to support it safely. You can get a proper stand that will go up into the front here and lift it off the ground and they're great, but I don't have one. So, now I've got an access stand at the back. I didn't really need to do that. Um, and in fact, it might have been better if the rear wheel was actually in touch with the ground and therefore much harder to remove. Now. I've taken off the bash guard, the under tray, whatever you want to call it. It's easy enough to remove. Two bolts at the back, two bolts at the front. That's allowed me to get a jack under here and to lift the front of the bike up. So, as I say, it's actually ready to go. So now the bike is safe. I've got some additional straps on here to stop it moving sideways. So we're ready to work on it in a safe manner. We start by removing the wheel spindle bolt. Now, I've already loosened this off because I normally run uh, the power parts wheel sliders on here. I am going to upgrade these to better than these, but for now, they're better than nothing. Next, we need to take loosen the fender up, which means taking out these three bolts and the same on the other side. Don't lose a little plastic washer that comes with them. And now we can move this out of our way. You can, if you want, take it off. I'm going to do that because it's going to make it easier for me to show you what's happening. Next, we want to remove the ABS sensor. just so we can pull it out of the way of the wheel so it doesn't get damaged. As we move this in and out. And finally, the pinch bolts for the axle. And then we can push out the axle. It goes this way 
and it's a little hard to get in and reach it so I'm just going to put this bolt back in to get it started. As you can see this is now pushed out. This is where I really could do with being able to lift the wheel up. There we go. So that comes all the way through. Now it's useful at this point in time to note there are spaces in either side the wheel. It's really good practice to put them in the direction that they came in onto the spindle. All right, so this, as you can see, actually fits into a rubber seal there, and that goes on there. It's also good practice to keep your hands clean as you work because you will be picking up grease. And we have another spacer this side. On some bikes, these are different. In this case, it actually looks like they're identical, but still, it's good practice to put it on this way around. So now they're on the wheel spindle in the same orientation they are on the wheel. And now we can pull the wheel out. Now, it's important to note, very important to note, whilst this wheel is out of the brake caliper, do not touch the front brake lever because if you do, you'll push the pads in. A little bit of wiggling and the wheel comes out. With the wheel laid down safely on something that's uh, not going to scratch the paint on the other side of the wheel, we can continue with removing the brake disc. Uh, make sure you've got it really well into the actual hexagon because these aren't the highest of quality uh, bolts to be perfectly honest. This one proved a bit resistant. It didn't want to come out. Um, and it's down to the Loctite that's used. Uh, they must have used way too much Loctite on this. In the end, I had to use some heat on it, which is never a good thing. And you've got to be really careful because you've got the wheel bearings and seals here. If you get this too hot, you'll bake the, the grease out of the seals. So a little bit of heat, fortunately in this case, manage to loosen this off. And looking at these bolts, they had red Loctite applied, which is not what is specified in the manual at all. So that's what's the difficulty there. Now you take the ABS ring off. I've discoloured that there from the heat. I might need to buy myself a new one of those at some point. And we can take the original disc off. So just make sure you clean up around here. We don't want any dirt that's crept in from preventing our new disc from seating properly. Because of the thread lock, I'm just running a tap down these threads to make sure that they are nice and clean. I've 
I've cleaned up the threads on the bolts on the wire wheel so they are now clean uh, Loctite 243 is what uh, KTM recommend for putting these back in now 243 is a medium strength now I'm actually going to use 248 so we take the new disc and we put it on now you need to make sure you've got it on the right way around on the OAM disc there's actually an arrow which tells you which way round but as a general guide the side with the writing on is typically the one that should be on the outside here for example you can see it says Galf and whatever Galf will want you to be able to read who made the disc so they'll put it on the outside I suspect the only difference between this and 243 is actually the fact that this is a solid don't overdo it you saw how much trouble I had getting these off although that was with red such that I actually had to resort to heat heat breaks down uh, Loctite or whatever is your equivalent and before I put these in right so we take our ABS ring Once you've got them hand tight, evenly, then we can start talking them down. 30 newton meters is what we're looking for. So we just sneak up on that. Next time I'll buy new bolts if I do this because these are getting a little bit worn out. Right, before we continue, let's get some brake cleaner on and remove. any grease that's got on the, to the disc while we've been playing with it and let's reinstall now get the uh, brake disc in between the pads There we go. Helps to look down to line it up. Now it's time to put this back together. This shaft here is greased, not because it moves, it's just to make it come in and out easier. So I'm gonna take off this spacer and put it here. Take off this spacer and put it that side so I know where they are. Now you take a little grease and just grease this. It doesn't need to be overly greased. It's a good idea before we do this if we actually clean these up. Because what we don't want to be doing is transferring dirt from this into there. Get those in first. Now it's a little bit of wiggling here. We've got to get it lined up, and there we go. So that pushes in all the way. 
Now we can put our ABS sensor back in. Now, before I tighten that up, I am going to screw this back in. Now this is longer than the standard one because it has the uh, power parts spacer on it. Right, so that's 25 newton meters. This is eight, which frankly is finger tight or hand tight. And that is most of the ins installation finished. What we need to do now is to lower the bike back down so the weight is on the wheel, so we can torque up the nuts on the other side and we still need to refit the front mug guard. Now we need to clamp this back up. Why do we do it last? Well one of the reasons you'll see here is that this is free floating. You can actually see that or not. But that this is not yet fixed to this and it allows it to actually sit where it is natural for it to sit. One thing we can do before we do that is to pump out the front brakes. So that we don't forget to do it before we try and ride away down the road. So with this in its natural position, I can't do it because I haven't got the handlebars in on, but what you often want to do with these is before you tighten it, these down, is to actually sit on the bike, grab the front brake, squeeze it, and bump the suspension up and down because that'll allow everything to resettle and seat. Then come up and torque these back up. Now these are 15 newton meters, which is really not very much at all. Don't forget the uh, little plastic washers. These are pretty much hand tight. Torque value is seven newton meters. So absolutely nothing at all. So that's it. It's a nice, easy job to change the brake discs, except perhaps for those stubborn uh, bolts to hold the disc on, where certainly mine had had far too much Loctite of the wrong sort put on at the factory. And I say that because that's not what the factory manual is recommending. So probably a good idea to actually buy yourself a new set of bolts, uh, disc bolts, when you come to change this. It's also good practice when you're putting on a new disc to put new pads in. The reason you do that is that as your original disc wears, it becomes slightly wavy on the surface and the discs actually, the, or the pads, then wear into it. So both have the same sort of profile to them because the pads, the discs do wear, even though they're steel, they do wear out. So if you then put a brand new disc in, the only thing part of the pad that's going to touch is the very tips. And that means that you'll get almost no braking at all. Even with a new pad, you need to brake it in. 
but if you've got a new disc with an old pad, really you've got to wear off those high points before the brake uh, will actually work properly. Now, because I've got an old disc and old pads, it's probably going to be even worse. But uh, best practice, new pads, new disc. So there you go. Um, it's, as I say, a simple enough job. And uh, thanks very much for actually st sitting through and uh, watching this with me. And I will see you guys again soon.